Hello everyone, today is a bit of a rush Polyverge 2 video, mostly because of the new, very recent major update that's been released for the game, which is the new World 5 update. If you've been playing this game yourself and are still going through World 5, you should probably leave now if you don't want any spoilers. Now, what am I talking about specifically? Well, I'm talking about the world that comes after World 5, and that is the Secret World, which is only achievable through completing 100% of the main campaign worlds 1 through 5. Now, if you haven't heard about the news, I was one of the level designers for the Secret World. Today, though, I won't be actually playing my own levels because there's a different level I saw in this world, which was level 6-8, squeeze through. Now, as you can see in my solution, the roads need to avoid colliding with custom shapes and fit through some gaps to form a new bridge below. Now, I had a fairly quote-unquote simplistic solution. The reason why I'm putting this in quotes is because this little single-stage design dwarves in comparison with the three-stage design we're going to be building today. Because yes, I didn't even realize there were three stages for this level until now. And anywho, here's today's checklist of challenges. First, I need to use the original 8 roads restriction so it doesn't defeat the purpose of the level requiring hydraulics. Second, I am allowing unlimited budget and unlimited materials for everything else, though I'm still going to try to minimize the number of hydraulics I need to use for this design. Third, and I think this is going to be the most interesting part of this challenge, I must complete the squeeze through with all the roads flat at all times. With those rules in mind, let's begin. Now just a short rant here, uh, for a future video I'm planning to take some of the World 5 and World 6 levels and actually go back in time. I'm going to go to different versions and I'm going to showcase all of the variation and how each level got changed and revised over time. So I've gotten permission from Bolt, who was the head level designer, so I'm pretty excited to actually get working with that video after this. Now, enough of that rant, you can see me here building a windmill design, which I was struggling quite a bit because I was trying to get it to rotate 90 degrees, and I don't know why, but I couldn't figure out where to put the hydraulic, but I figured it out in the end. After that, I doubled up the windmill and connected it with wooden beams, and the interesting characteristic of this is that the beams, which in this case start vertical, always stay vertical. Uh, this has to do with parallel linkages and stuff like that, which I will discuss in a later video. Uh, all you need to know is that these vertical beams, when they're staying in place, I can connect anything to them or replace them with something else and it will always stay at the same angles. And in this case, I want the roads to stay at the same angle. So in this case, what I did was that I took the roads and connected it to the two windmills with a diamond shape. And I split jointed the roads apart so they didn't tear themselves to pieces. <laughs> and it was right around this moment when I was pretty confident that this challenge I set up for myself was pretty easy, to be honest. Once I rotated it vertically and hoisted it down and turned back, it's solved. Except that, of course, it wasn't going to be that easy. As you can see, the roads are colliding with the custom shape, so I can't rotate it in a fixed position when it's doing this. So, a minor change of plans. I'm going to keep the windmill design. However, I'm going to also have to hoist it up at the same time, then hoist it back down, and then as it folds back in, I need to hoist it back up just a little bit again. So, how do I hoist it up and down? Well, I'm going to use a linear linkage, of course, because this is a very tight space. I couldn't just use any other type of linkage or just break. Now, if I hadn't learned my lesson from last time, linkage I was trying right now, once again, didn't work for me. You know, this one. Exactly, so, so, much, so much, so I'm not sure what measurements I've gotten wrong here, but it seems that the carriage was starting to drop a little bit. <laughs> Why don't I learn? Now, the second mistake that I made was I didn't save before I made the linkage. So I had to really undo everything by hand because I do this to myself. <laughs> 
Well, at, le at least I'm learning now instead of later. So, it's back to my trusty steed, which was whatever this design was, you know, the 507 mechanical movements one. You can see that I'm doing this way above the actual rotating design. Uh, this is mostly as a preference. I don't actually have to do this, but it's easier for me to see, and it's also less clutter, of course. Once again, you can kind of see a vague Y shape, uh, which is kind of the characteristic of this hydraulic linkage. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to now discuss about how I had to actually do hydraulics, because in this case, I had to hoist it up and then down and then back up again. So in this case, I needed a small hoist upwards and then a big hoist downwards. So in this case, I need a small hydraulic stacked on top of a larger hydraulic. The small hydraulic would hoist up a little bit, and then in the second hydraulic stage, both the small and the large would contract, so hoist it all the way down, and then in the final stage, the small hydraulic would expand again, so it would hoist up back again. Alright, so let's test this. Okay, super promising stuff here, but it's not lowering far enough. So, what to do? So, my first attempt was to bring the hydraulics closer to the axle of movement. Now, this wasn't the best idea in the world, because there was a lot of stress. This was a very big arm with a, with a lot of rope. It's heavy. But I could account for that in my second attempt, which was I realized I could just bring the axle closer rather than bring the hydraulics closer to the axis. And the reason why is because that it shortens the arm, so then it doesn't have that big of a need of a push, essentially. So I slowly brought it closer and closer and closer, and the hydraulics were breaking, like, the hydraulics were breaking, everything was breaking. And this is because after a phase, hydraulics no longer become invincible. Uh, if you didn't know, hydraulics are invincible when they're in a phase, which is why some of my designs are so ridiculously complicated, because a hydraulic just can handle all of that movement all at once. And this part probably took a good hour or two to fix, uh, which is mostly because of the node weight and road weight, because nodes, which are joint, are the only things that actually have weight in this game. Every other material, except road, which I'll talk about soon, doesn't have any weight. Because if you put a steel beam, that's like a full length steel beam, and put it right next to a tiny wooden beam, they'll weigh exactly the same, because they're, they're both only two joints. Now, a road, however, actually has weight. So it's two nodes, plus a road, so the road length actually is determinant on the weight in this case, which means why, which explains why a small road would actually be a huge steel beam. So finally, after about an hour or two of tweaking, I finally got it to not break, and that is really disappointing to me. Now this link just doesn't move reliably linearly either, just Ugh. So I was pretty frustrated by that, but after a while I realized my error, which was I shouldn't have brought the axle closer. That actually breaks the linear movement. It relies on the specific length of the Y piece, so I had to delete it and retry. It was really painful for me, but that's the price you gotta pay when making really complicated designs like mine. Now I guess I was kind of forced to use the first attempt. Now, there was something that I realized while I was strengthening this, and that was I could actually take the weight off of the hydraulics as the phase was ending by just adding split joints to the actual arm. And these split joints would then connect to support beams, which would then just carry the weight of the arm rather than the hydraulic. So, back to creating muscles and stuff. Now I also hooked some cables below the land and also some cables towards the structures all on the, all on the side of the level for stability, which is kind of similar to how I did it in Fairy Bridge design. Now I was getting pretty sick with this design and I was just ready to give up on it. It was another like 3-4 hours of just me 
just tweaking it over and over and over and over, and just fixing things that were breaking, and it was just, it was, I was ready to go on it, but I finally had a glimmer of hope. Here you can see that the rows were rearranged into the pod shape, it was lowered through the gap, and it actually connected. It, it freaking connected. It seems like such a small thing to you guys, but it was a huge deal for me at the time. It, because this grind was finally over and I could finally get half the design working. <laughs> so with a huge sort of excitement out of this, I quickly copied the design, flipped it, and then moved it to the other side. I quickly strapped it to the structures and I strapped it below the train and finally I was done with this. I no longer had to deal with the pain of tweaking and oh wait I forgot to fix the split joint but let's ignore that. <laughs> um, but yeah finally it's done and I'm so happy to show you the final product so enjoy. So that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to press the like button. And if you're interested for more content like this, subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'm your local Drogopoly engineer. Have a wonderful day.